Your Steve Jones Show podcast is loading now. The Steve Jones Show podcast is sponsored by Sunbury Motors, North 4th Street in Sunbury, and Sunbury Motors Kia, routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf. Let's uh, bring in Chris Mack now from Pittsburgh. Sir, welcome. Great to have you with us. Good to be with you, Steve. So let's get to uh, Ben Roethlisberger. I know I brought this up last week, but let's just revisit uh, because the relevancy, you know, we just talked about the Patriots, relevant for two decades, mm-hmm. Belichick, Brady, uh, Packers relevant for a couple decades, Favre to Rodgers, and the Steelers, whether it was Coward to Tomlin, but also Roethlisberger was the constant during this two-decade run. I mean, can mm-hmm. you, you know, I mean, the reality is, he's been the, he was their best player the almost the entire time. Yeah, and, and what I I think is interesting when we think about parallels, um, you know, he was always he he was you know he wanted to emulate John Elway as a kid. John Elway was one of his quarterbacking heroes. That's why he chose number seven. And when I look at it now, you know, Elway, as successful as he was at the end of his career, um, was always sort of a second fiddle, second, third fiddle to the Montanas and Marinos of the world, even though Marino never won a championship. And Ben, I think, ultimately is going to end up going down. Look, he's he's a hero to so many Steelers fans, but I think when you look at his career and the entire two-decade arc of it as compared to Brady and Manning, he'll end up going down as sort of a second or third fiddle to those guys. And um, I think similar to Elway, you'll always wonder, well, what if he had not been a part of that great era of quarterbacks, you know? Um, And I think that's, that's probably a proper perspective to put Roethlisberger in uh, is first ballot hall of famer, two time Super Bowl champ, a very exclusive club in, uh, in that regard. But certainly it's got to be tough when you're as good as Roethlisberger was, or you're as good, even as Manning was, or like I mentioned Elway, but you weren't even the best of your generation, you know? Um, so it's it's an interesting legacy he'll leave behind, and certainly with everything else going on here in Pittsburgh, given the the status of the GM, um, the status of the possible heir apparents to the GM, uh, and all the other things going on, uh, it'll be interesting to see how they move forward from this. Yeah, moving forward eventually is going to be <laughs> the key to all this. But Roethlisberger, did he did he do a good job? of rehabilitating his off-the-field image? Because obviously now with his wife, his children, mm-hmm. you see them around him all the time. Did he eventually rehabilitate his off-field image? I think as, as well as you can, given how poor his off-field image was in the first five years, six years of his career. Um, you know, when you consider, and it wasn't just the sexual assault allegations in Georgia or Nevada, it was... Um, just the way he carried himself around Pittsburgh. Um, He was boorish, uh, to put it simply. He was inconvenienced by most people who were around him um, who weren't pretty girls. Um, He was, um, he acted like a 22, 23, 24-year-old kid who had just won two Super Bowls and was more or less handed the keys to one of the most storied franchises in North American sports history. Um, and I think he, he just wasn't, he wasn't ready for that. Um, maybe if he's a guy who had gone to a bigger, uh, program in college, who had had more media attention on him in college, who had been a little more polished, he wouldn't have fallen into those traps. Maybe he would have anyway. And that's just his personality and the apparent, uh, rehabilitation we've seen over the last eight to 10 years is, is just that it's a perception rather than reality. But I think for the most part, fans have been willing to forgive the way he acted years ago uh, because it did come to a stop seemingly. And, um, it, it, and that was the biggest concern, you know, that story, I'm not sure if you've seen it yet this morning about that Mike Singletary claims, um, you know, the Niners were close to acquiring Roethlisberger um, around the time of his troubles in Georgia. Um, and it, I remember distinctly advocating on the air uh, way back then that they should consider moving on from Roethlisberger mm-hmm. um, in favor of a younger quarterback. And it sounds like they were very close perhaps to doing that, or at least the 49ers and Mike Singletary believe they were close to pulling the trigger on it way back when. Um, 
it, it was at that point. People were ready to be done with him here in Pittsburgh, despite two Super Bowls uh, and all the talent he had. We were ready to be done with him. And the fact that he brought it all the way back around for, for a lot of those people to in the final couple years of his career, being willing to more or less hit pause on the organizational development that's going on all around him so they can more or less have a walk off into the sunset year for him. Um, that's, that's, I think, rehabilitation, image rehabilitation enough for, for most fans. What turned it around for him? Uh, was it a realization like, hey, man, I got to stop. Uh, I'm wearing out my welcome. Or was it getting married? I think, well, a little bit of both. I think his wife, Ashley, uh, did help settle him down. Um, obviously, he wasn't going out and partying anymore. Or if he was, it, it, it was limited to, you know, going out with the guys on his team. And um, it wasn't really a party anymore. Um, he did become more of a homebody, um, at least, again, according to public perception. But I think, you know, that moment when he he did question whether he was going to remain with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Mm-hmm. He had to sit out those first four games of the 2010 season. Um, that was like a two by four upside the head, I think. Um, and I think that more than anything was the wake up call. Listen, uh, you win two Super Bowls. Like I said, you're flying high. You're a young mm-hmm. guy in your early sure. to mid twenties and the world is in the palm of your hand seemingly. And then you realize that it could all be gone in an instant. Um, and I think that more than anything is what woke him up. And, you know, I, if it were a different organization that at the time had not had the same sort of father figure in place uh, in Dan Rooney, mm-hmm. I don't know. You know, Mr. Rooney is a guy who so many players in that organization and before him, his father, Art, I'm sure you've talked to Jack about this before in the past. Sure. Um, yeah. they, they They played – for him, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, it, it was to honor the Rooney name as much as it was to honor the Steelers' name. Um, and I think when Ben Roethlisberger realized the dishonor he was bringing to the Rooney name as much as the Steelers' name and his own name, I think that helped wake him up. Big. Now they have to move forward. They never really did draft a successor. Uh, there's no right. Jordan Love on the roster. Not the time. Let me think about that for a moment. Yeah. Um, and... Uh, <laughs> I didn't like him at Utah State, uh, but uh, you know, what kind of speculation is there going to be in the city? And in fact, Kenny Pickett you know, has played the last few years in the city. Does that at least enter into the mindsets of the fan base? I'm not talking about Kevin Colbert, but the fan base. Uh, the fans, yes, certainly. For those fans that are both Pitt Panthers fans and Steelers fans, um, they love that idea, but they also don't think there's a good chance that Pickett will make it the 20th overall. Now, if the stuff that we've seen in Denver today uh, is any indication, it wouldn't be surprising to see Aaron Rodgers end up with the Broncos now, which would take them off the board for a quarterback, certainly, and might help Pickett slide a little farther. I still don't know if he slides to 20, but maybe Matt Corral slides to 20. Um, And I think those two are probably near the top of the list if the Steelers are keeping an eye on quarterbacks who might fall into their lap at that point. Um, But I don't think they're going to go out of their way to draft a quarterback in the first round. I don't think they'd move up. Um, I think if they're sitting at 20 and the quarterbacks are off the board, they'll take an offensive lineman. If the offensive lineman and the quarterbacks are off the board, they'll just look elsewhere. It's not like they don't have other holes they could fill in the draft. Um, As for quarterback, I'd be be pretty surprised if they don't bring in a veteran uh, to challenge sort of a, a borderline starting quarterback style veteran to challenge Rudolph and Haskins and just provide a little bit of an insurance policy, you know, whether that's a Trubisky or a Minshew or I don't know, a a Bridgewater type. I don't know. Um, But all those guys apparently are available to be had. I don't know if they go so far as to trade a first round pick for, you know, a Jimmy Garoppolo certainly, or a Derek Carr. Uh, and I don't think they're they're going to realistically be in the Rogers sweepstakes. Um, so I, I think, you know, it, it'll probably be a veteran stock gap to come along uh, and provide, like I said, a little bit of insurance and also a little bit of a competitive push to Rudolph and Haskins. They'll try and rebuild all the other spots on the roster that need fortifying. And then if they go seven and 10 and end up getting themselves a top 15 pick in 23, well, that's when you can look at your, you know, uh, your Bryce Loves and some some other possibilities, uh, or Bryce Young, pardon me, Bryce um, Young. and other possibilities uh, going into that draft. 
Okay. Is the Steeler fan base, are they able to accept 7-10? and 10? Um, If they know that there's a payoff, I think they will. If 7-10 and 10, uh, were to include, you know, trading for a Jimmy Garoppolo, like I said, or bringing in a more established veteran quarterback rather than a stopgap of sorts, um, then they would certainly not be satisfied with that. 7-10, and 10, I think fans will be able to swallow if they know that there's a payoff on the other end of it. Um, and I think that will be, that would be the question. Um, you know, I think a lot of them would be willing to take that step back for just a year, seven and 10, six and 11, whatever it may be. Uh, because that's the last, that's what had to happen the last time to secure a franchise quarterback. They had to go six and 10 in order to get the, the pick where they were when they drafted Roethlisberger. And I think everyone realizes that your best chance to get a franchise quarterback, it's not exclusive, but your best chance to get a franchise quarterback is, top 10, top 12 in the draft. Well, it's been quite a run for him, quite a run for the Steelers. And uh, now the next <laughs> step comes up. <laughs> yeah, and it, I, I, that's that's the thing, Steve. It, it, they did, like I said, more or less hit pause on their organizational development for a year in order to honor Roethlisberger with one final season. And whether you believe that was the plan all along, or perhaps they made an offer to Roethlisberger that they thought he would turn down and he ended up accepting it and they were stuck between a rock and a hard place. Um, they've hit, not only hit pause on the development of the organization based on, you know, just honoring Roethlisberger for a year, but also at a time when Kevin Colbert, as I mentioned before, may decide to retire after the draft. Right. Um, he's apparently seriously considering that. And Brandon Hunt, who would be the heir apparent, uh, may take a job with the Raiders or anybody else who may interview him for a GM position. Uh, Omar Khan's been interviewed by the Bears, uh, amongst other teams in the last couple of years. He would be the other guy, their VP of personnel, who might take over Colbert's job. And they might very quickly end up looking around, having no one ready to take Colbert's job and also Colbert retiring and I can't imagine it's very easy to conduct a GM search in the middle of June after your roster's already been set. My friend, thanks so much. Appreciate the time, as always. Thank you, Steve. Always, uh, always happy to jump on with you.